Hello everyone, uh, my name is Philip and I'm a technical consultant for the Revuto team. Welcome to another Tech Talk. Uh, today we will be talking about Cardano staking. Uh, we will be talking about the protocol level staking of the Cardano network. Right, so what does staking mean? Uh, uh, we have several types of consensus mechanisms in blockchain technology. Uh, first one, the, probably the most well-known one, is proof-of-work that's been implemented in Bitcoin and Ethereum so far. Uh, the newer ones are proof-of-stake uh, consensus algorithms. Right, so what's the difference? Uh, in a proof-of-work consensus algorithm, uh, we have a notion that we have to do some kind of work to confirm, to validate the transactions on the network, to create the new blocks and add them to the blockchain. So how do we do this work? We do this work by doing uh, some intense, uh, basically mathematical calculations. And for that, we need a lot of energy. Energy, you know, hence work. That's why it's called proof of work. So uh, in proof of work algorithms, it's uh, imperative that you input the necessary work to validate transactions and to create mint new blocks and to add them in the blockchain, right? So uh, this is a perfectly fine system and it works. Uh, one of the main issues with proof of work is that it uses a lot of energy and that it's uh, potentially very expensive, it has issues with the environment and so on and so on. So now we have proof of stake, right? So what is proof of stake? Proof of stake, uh, instead of taking in work as a, as a method of validating transactions, in proof of stake algorithms, we are relying on stake of the network. So let's say currently we have about 32 and a half, 33 billion ADA in circulating supply. So in order for us to create more blocks, we need a larger amount of stake of that ADA, right? So we're using the native cryptocurrency as a means of validating blocks and minting them and adding them to the blockchain, right? Uh, so, if we talk about the vulnerabilities of, uh, let's say, proof of work and proof of stake, one of the most common uh, uh, common attacks is called 51% attack. Right? In proof of work uh, algorithms, to achieve 51% attack, you need to have 51% of the hash rate or of, of all the work that is being done in the network, which is let's say in Bitcoin is not feasible and basically practically impossible. Uh, same applies for ADA because to have a 51% stake of ADA, you would need, uh, you would need about 12.5 billion ADA, which is, let's say, north of $13 billion, right? So it's basically um, not feasible for, an econom for a rational economic actor, it's not feasible to accrue this much ADA just to, just to attack the, the chain. Now, there are two mechanisms uh, usually implemented in proof-of-stake algorithms. Uh, they are not implemented in Cardano, we'll go over that a bit later, uh, but usually uh, they are employed to increase the security of the network. First one is called locking, second one is called slashing. So what is locking? Locking is uh, you want the validators. So in proof of work, they are called miners. In Cardano, they are called uh, stake pool operators, but let's call them validators. Uh, validators usually have to lock their cryptocurrency if they want to be active validators and participate in creating new blocks and so on. So let's say you take a, a chunk of your cryptocurrency, you lock it for an extended period of time, and in that period of time, you are allowed to mint new blocks, right? Uh, the point of that is to implement slashing, because if you have a locked amount of cryptocurrency, then if you are a bad actor, and the network notices and decides that you are a bad actor, which means that you want to game the protocol for your own benefit and do some, uh, let's say, generally 
inappropriate actions, that locked cryptocurrency can be slashed, basically. What, what does it mean? Let's say you have 100,000 ADA locked, and uh, you do an infraction and the network recognizes it, uh, it is possible to, let's say, that the network takes 20% of your locked ADA, 20,000 ADA, uh, to take it and put it into the treasury, and in that way, economically punish you for your bad behavior. Again, this is not implemented in Cardano, but this is a general way of how proof-of-stake algorithms sometimes work. Okay, so that's proof-of-stake in general, right? Now we have Cardano's version of proof-of-stake. Cardano has, uh, as we mentioned in previous tech talks, uh, Ouroboros is the name of the consensus algorithm. And uh, Ouroboros is actually DPoS or delegated proof-of-stake. Okay, so what does that mean? We have a couple of uh, different actors in this, in this protocol. Uh, first type of actors are called stake pool operators. So they are the validators. They are responsible for running the computers, the machinery, to have uh, you know, connection to the network all the time. You know, all the servers need to be maintained, etc., etc. So they are really doing this professionally. Okay. Uh, and then you have delegators. And delegators uh, delegate their own ADA to the stake pool operator, right? So let's say we have stake pool A, and stake pool A currently contains 20,000 ADA. And uh, we have five new delegators that each delegate to the stake pool another 1,000 ADA. So now the stake pool operator controls 25,000 ADA of stake, right? The higher the stake of the stake pool operator, the more chance that stake pool operator has of minting a new block. There is a, there is a curve to limit you know, centralization and so on, but we won't get into that today. But let's say in general, the larger amount of stake you have as a stake pool operator, the higher are your chances to mint a new block and to make, you know, uh, make new ADA and benefit yourself economically, right? The important thing here is to say, because we said earlier, there is no locking, there is no slashing. Uh, for delegators, it's very important to understand that when you delegate your ADA to a stake pool, you don't actually, your ADA doesn't leave your wallet, right? So the stake pool operator is never in control of your ADA. Your ADA is always in your wallet and you can use it, you can spend it, transfer it without any restrictions. So this is a very friendly uh, system for the delegator. Um, also, stake pool operators are then relieved of the responsibility of being uh, basically uh, a custodian of someone else's digital assets. So that's why we have the notion of uh, these are called staking keys and you delegate actually your staking key to your stake pool operator and so on. Uh, and we'll go a little bit more deeper into, let's say, the infrastructure of, uh, of a stake pool. So the minimum requirement of a stake pool operator is to have one block producing node and one relay node. Usually stake pool operators, well, I think almost most of them have two nodes, two relay nodes. Some have more, but one is a minimum. The idea is that your block producing node communicates only with your relay nodes, not with the rest of the network. This is also to prevent some kind of, uh, let's say, uh, network attacks to the block producer. And your relay nodes are responsible for communicating with other relay nodes in the network. Uh, this is uh, meant also, like I said, for, for security, but is also uh, meant to increase the speed of propagation. Uh, because uh, bl the block producing node produces a block and it's a responsibility of the stake pool operator that when that block is produced that it is transferred through the whole global network as soon as possible, very quickly. Ideally it would be within one or two seconds. So that's why the 
even the geographic location of the relay nodes is, uh, is very important. Okay, so there's a lot, of, a lot more you know, details, technical details that we can go into uh, with state pool operators and how the process works. But I just wanted to share some statistics in the, in the end. So currently we have 72.5% of total ADA in circulation is staked. Uh, just to give a little bit of background, you have to stake your wallet actively, you have to decide one time, okay, I want to stake my wallet and all of the ADA that is in it. You don't have to do that, but uh, as soon as you do it one time, it is staked forever until you unstake it. So 72.5% of uh, ADA currently in circulating supply is staked. And there's really, really no reason for your ADA to not be staked because it simply earns you about 4 to 5% a year of ADA uh, for basically no, you know, there is, there is no negative sides to, to having your ADA staked. You can always use it, you can always spend it. Uh, your wallet doesn't have to be, you know, connected all the time. You don't have to run a full node, nothing. You have no responsibility. You just take your wallet and that's it. Currently, we have 1.1 million wallets that are staked. We have about 3,200 pools, active pools, that you can stake your ADA to. I think about uh, more than 2,000 of them have made at least one block, not all. Uh, stake pools uh, are creating blocks. Remember there is a curve that says that increases your chances of minting a block depending on how much ADA is staked to the stake pool. And in the end we have this uh, Nakamoto coefficient that currently sits around 22 uh, for Cardano. So what is Nakamoto coefficient? Uh, Nakamoto coefficient is one of the attempts to measure the decentralization and the security of a, of a blockchain protocol. Basically, number 22 means that there are 22 separate independent entities that would need to work together to collude to have 51% of stake, right? So if those 22 entities collude together, theoretically, they can attack the network. 22 is a rather large number in, in modern, you know, modern blockchain protocols. I am not sure, but I think Bitcoin's Nakamoto coefficient is around 3 or 4. So, according to this measure, Cardano is pretty sufficiently decentralized. So, uh, please write in your comments uh, which pools do you stake to and why. Uh, let us know. We are interested to, to hear from you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs>